So the light thing is going to be pretty simple, so I'm going to just go make sure back here it's recording and I'll get to you. Okay, we are on air. So welcome to the City of Norman City Council Business and Community Affairs Committee a meeting of Thursday, October 3rd, 2019. We have one item on the agenda, and that is a presentation from Dr. Gabriel Bird regarding the Norman Flag Project. So welcome, Dr. Thank Bird. You. Thanks for having me. Is there a remote for this or do I just click on it? Do we know? Click on it. Click on it? Okay. I am unsure. So uh, a lot of you have heard this before, some of you haven't, so we're given the full refresher. My name is Gabriel Bird. I'm a dentist here in Norman. I was uh, born and raised here and I um, recently noticed a, a bit of a flaw in some, well, in our flag. So I've been yammering on about this for a few years about why we need to redesign it and I'd like to tell you about it today because a lot of people say, well, why a new flag? Um, and I'm glad you asked. But first I do have some questions for you. I know, I know in this room, most everybody here does know that we do have a flag. Is that correct, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what it looks like? Yes. So go ask a few people here in the next few weeks and most people won't know or won't know that we have a flag. But when you show it to them, then they recognize it because we see it all the time. Uh, so, uh, our flag design this first came to my attention when I listened to a really great podcast about this. And it was about the Joint Commission on Vexillological Studies. Vexillology is the study of flags. And the North American Vexillological Association got together with their European counterpart to study what makes a successful flag. Now, the study of vexillology isn't so much about the aesthetics of a flag, but it's about the significance, the history that goes into it. And that's where you get really good looking flags, but you start with the culture that they represent and the way that cultures embody a flag and use a flag. They studied which flags historically had been the most successful, and they narrowed down to five principles of flag design that many of these designs had in common. Uh, their whole report is on their website. It's a fantastic read. The, um, you guys are going to have to laugh at more of my jokes while we're... <laughs> there we, there we, okay. I know so, you're passionate. I wasn't sure if that... <laughs> yeah. So this is our flag. We all see it on our, on our bill every month, and we see it on the side of the city trucks, and we see it on the street signs. And it's, it's not a horrible design. It just does not function very well as a flag. So if we compare it to those five principles of flag design set forth by NAVA and the Joint Commission, these are their guidelines. First is to keep it simple. And we missed the mark on that one. It's a little complicated. <laughs> uh, and they mean so simple that a small child can draw it from memory. For example, my sweet daughter, who was about to turn nine, back when she was six years old and I started really thinking about this, I asked her to draw, and we know what this is, right? The stars and bars, and I think she did a pretty good job of it. And uh, that's the level of simplicity that we're after. The next use meaningful symbolism and our flag we've got the sun on the horizon looking into the future we've got the gear of industry we've got a feather for our native cultures we've got the lightning bolt for energy uh, and i like to think that we predicted back then we would all be thunder fans by now <laughs> and uh, the musical note for the arts wheat stock for agriculture and pencil for for education so these are definitely meaningful to us, but they're not exactly symbolically represented. Uh, if we think about the United States flag again, each star represents a state, and each stripe represents one of the first 13 colonies. That's what we're talking about with symbolism. So two to three basic colors, we nailed that one. But I use this point to mention that you can have a successful black flag and break one or two of these rules at a time. So for example, here's a pop quiz. Does anybody know it's a country? What country's flag this is? Brazil. Uh, that's not a bad guess. It is South Africa, correct. And they have a lot of colors on there, but it's a wonderful flag because they follow all of the other principles very well. Uh, no lettering or seals. And we wrote our name on ours. So uh, hearkening back to the stars and bars, 
we all know this is America and you don't need to write United States of America on it to know that. And that's when once a flag's really been identified with by a culture, the words are no longer necessary. And we want to be distinctive or be related. And our flag certainly is distinctive. I mean, that one is up for debate. I think the, the things that we are incorporating on our flag are wonderful, meaningful things that, that we can all agree are important to our town. The, the execution is just not. And, and I don't think this is a bad looking bit of graphics design as a whole. It just does not function very well as a flag. So this is not one of NAVA's recommendations, but something that as I've been researching this has come up more and more often, which should be point number six, is that a good flag is also not copyrighted. Ours is, which limits its use. So if somebody wanted to go put this on a shirt or wanted to utilize this for an event, they can't. So not copyrighted, which is also why I can't say it enough. I don't hate this design. It's just not a good flag. And part of our proposal is that this design will remain as our city seal. Because plenty of government agencies have their own seal. It exists independently of the flag. And then the flag really can be a symbol for the people of that community. And that's what we're after. Back to our uh, artistic study we did with my six-year-old. I asked her to take a swing at our flag from memory. And that's what she came up with wasn't bad and since I've stared at this flag so much I went ahead and tried it myself from memory and got you know, close ish but it just I think speaks to how overcomplicated the flag actually is more of the things you're looking for well-designed flags versus poorly designed flags you need to be able to recognize them from across the room when they're on a lapel pin you need to be able to recognize them from a distance they need to be recognizable when they're in the wind or when they're at rest. That's another thing about our flag that works against it since we are banner style when it is a beautiful day in Norman and it's just in that beautiful fall breeze, it's sideways. Um, easy to see in reverse, that's where lettering gets complicated because from the backside it's backwards or you have to make more expensive flags that have uh, two layers. And the distinctive part is they're not easily confused with other flags. On our poor, the poor design example side, we have many representations of what's known in vexillological circles as the SOB, which is the seal on blue, which is what a lot of places do. They just pick a blue field and stick the seal on it and it doesn't make for a great flag or it doesn't set it apart from other flags very well. So now that we're all experts in flag design, the, the next quiz of the day which one of these is a good flag and which is a bad flag? <laughs> Chicago flag. The bottom flag. is good. Right? We didn't even need to write Chicago on that one. Yeah. So the, the Chicago flag is, is a bit of the darling of the vexillological world. We love it. We're going to talk a little more about that. The Milwaukee flag, again, I'll say, would not a bad poster, right? But not a great flag. And fun fact, Milwaukee redesigned their flag recently. I got to talk with the guy who led this charge. And... Um, this is what they came up with, which I think is much nicer. It works a lot better for what a flag should do. The flag of Chicago, meaningful symbolism, right? So the two blue stripes are bodies of water around the city. The three white stripes are regions of the city. Each of those stars represents an event or a principle that's important to that city. I didn't mention earlier, but another thing that's not necessary but nice to have is amendability of a flag. This flag originally just had three stars across the middle. Later, they added one. Uh, another famous amendable flag is the United States flag. We add a star every time we add a state, but that's not required. When you get down into those stars, each point on each star represents another smaller facet of the overall what that star represents. What's so cool about this, if you think about, if you don't know anything about the city of Chicago, and you know somebody who knows this flag, and you can go have coffee with them or beer, and they can walk you through their flag, and by the time they're done, they will have told you the story of their city. That, I think, is remarkable. That's why we love this flag in the hobby world. They love the flag in Chicago, too. Part of it not being copyrighted is people use it like crazy. This, uh, this is a bicycle club that stylized it. This is uh, some Bulls fans. This one's one of my favorites. It was a music festival that stylized the flags for some of the things they were doing. So cool. T-shirts, cell phone cases, and everybody is free to use it however they want because there's no copyright on it. 
This is their city seal, and that's what shows up on the letterhead and on your utility bill each month, which is a great seal. But that's part of that, when I first started this and I thought, well, our flag's not great, the more I learned about this copyright thing and the seal versus flag, that is, it's a bigger deal than I realized, but it's an important part of this. Uh, not too long ago, my dear wife and I were traveling to the northeast coast to see some of her family and our layover in Chicago got delayed. So we were walking around the airport and I just, you see this flag everywhere. So gift shops, there was a restaurant that's used it, uh, t-shirts, mugs, Yeti cups. Our delay turned into an overnight stay in Chicago. So we went to go see the Bean, which is a fantastic piece of public art, which does anybody know the Bean's real name? Mm -mm. Cloud Gate. But we all know this. Anyway, well, we were driving to the Bean, and uh, I noticed on the ironwork on the overpass, they've incorporated their, the stars and their stripes of their flag, and it's just fantastic. The um, first responders all have patches of that flag on their uniforms. I didn't think it would be tasteful to include a picture, but it is known that first responders in Chicago, whenever they pass away, they have the option of having the Chicago flag laying over their casket. And a lot of them take that option. So you were talking about a city that loves and identifies themselves by this flag, not by the seal of the city. Uh, guess where this company is based? Chicago. So local industry. You, you take that copyright off of this, you have a cultural identity behind it, and you have things like this. Uh, the denim company, these guys are wonderful. I, if you see my cart, I did buy a pair of jeans from them and I love it. <laughs> uh, the, let's see, I had another point about these guys, but I'll bring it up if I remember it. Uh, Washington, D.C., also a popular flag in vexillological circles, but uh, you can see hits all of the principles. And if you walk around Washington, D.C., you see it on storefronts, you see it on t-shirts. They, a lot of their city agencies have included it in their individual seal, but again, it's a motif that shows up in there. It doesn't try to double as. But it also has historical significance in that it's part of the Washington family crest. Ooh. Oh, I didn't know that. It I, I haven't read this about this one as much as Chicago. Having lived in there for 15 years, mm -hmm. it does. It That's is. Cool. That's, That's really part of where it came from. Thank you. I'll, I'll look, I'll read more about that. We all know Tulsa recently redesigned their flag and it's a gorgeous design. And I saw this uh, not too long ago. So it's already making its way out Hansen into- Handsome Brothers had beer? Hmm? I'm sorry, I got <laughs> off track with the Hanson Brothers beer there on the left. <laughs> mm hops. Just, just imagine a beautiful Norman <laughs> flag. <laughs> <whatever you said. laughs> I'm sorry, I'm but so, so sorry. But so this thing, it works. If you get a killer design, it works pretty quickly that people will start adopting it. I don't know if you know much about the story of the Tulsa flag, but when they finally voted this, it hit some pushback. And before it was officially adopted by the city, about a year after they voted, or they chose the design after doing the votes and things, um, people were already flying this flag all over this Tulsa before it was officially adopted. So it kind of won before it had to be voted in. That um, actually, part of that story brings me to why Part of our plan, because I spoke with these guys too, was to in, involve the city council early and often because they, they did all independent, all independent, all independent, and then huge response. People loved it, but then there was an outcry at the last minute to say, why should we change our flag? This is terrible. And you know how those city council meetings can go. No, and what so are you talking about? Our plan is to actually have two committee members that are on council as advisory committee members that they can be in on the meetings, they can be in on the process. We're gonna be coming to council meetings regularly to give you guys updates. Uh, the, it's been asked a few times, when we do go to final vote, we're not gonna be including an option to retain the current flag because of the copyright issue with it. So there's not gonna be an option to keep it. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, if we don't copyright it, how do we keep somebody else from copywriting it and then not allowing us to use it? Huh. That's a good question. 
I don't know, <laughs> but I will, I will. I feel like it would maybe like a, a, an intellectual property so rights that's free to here. use. Okay, one. okay, okay, go. Uh, it's when you get copyrighted, it can't be confused or comparable to other things that already exist. Otherwise, it doesn't get, it's not independent, it's not an individual thing. So I think if they tried to do this, it'd be like, hey, this is already used using and it. it would be confused with this. Am I right, Catherine? I think so. That's for the similar one. Yeah. And then also, if it's, you can't copyright someone else's product. So you're the artist, like, I'm at, if we would be hiring an artist, but it's for the city. So you can't go and say, oh, I like that poem. I wrote it. <laughs> I shall copyright. Okay, well, cool. That's Good answer. Yeah. Actually. Okay, cool. I just was thinking that. Yeah. So we're not actually going to hire an artist. We're going to open this to submissions. But um, they will, whoever gets it will get the credit for it. So it's a good question. Thank you. A good answer. Thank you. Uh, so how are we planning on doing this? Uh, we've already got sort of permission to make this ad hoc committee. We're going to include the two members. I've spoken with Council Member Eastman. Yes, ma'am. On that note, you do need to put a disclaimer that they can't make. Whoever wins cannot take copyright on it. Oh, and for the okay. record, that was uh, Council Member Patron. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. I'm that's actually the apology was to her. <laughs> the way to work all on me. We got it. We're, we're live streaming as well, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So I'm going to be picking your brain a lot through this process. Uh, um, so the, the committee with the, the council involvement, we're going to open it to public submissions. Uh, Day Creative has been very gracious in helping us come up with our website so we can get that out there. Um, open submissions anybody can they're going to be encouraged to follow a three to five ratio rectangle and um, submit with an artist statement to explain their symbolism and their thinking behind it uh, the committee that we're currently assembling is going to narrow this down to a range of finalists five to ten we'll put that up for vote uh, and instead of a yes no you get to just rank each flag one to ten how much you like it this is the advice from the folks that did the Milwaukee flag. It helps the people that are going to campaign for just do mine, don't do that. It's going to disappear a little bit when people can score each flag as opposed to voting on each flag. Yes. So it's scored and not ranked? Because it would seem that you could still do, they're all nines, and it wouldn't help much. Instead of, this is my number one preference, this is my number two, mm -hmm. like ranked voting for people. Their advice was to say, score this one on a scale from one to ten. Uh, instead of ranking one, two, three, four, five, and that way some people are going to have two they love and they can rank them both tens, and they're going to have one or two they kind of like and they'll rank them sevens. Uh, with, with Milwaukee, with, uh, there's another one that did a redesign, and I, the name of that city is escaping me now. The consensus was that that is the best way to do it, to get the most fair response, because what will happen is you'll have people that campaign for one or try to get one pushed up or one pushed down, but when you have several thousand people vote, they'll all start emerging to a number and a, a very natural ranking of what the people at large like. And it gives people a chance to weigh in on multiple designs. You don't have to just choose one. And um, so whichever one gets the highest score there, Tulsa had a bit of a problem with theirs too because they required them. Council Member Scanlon. How do we take this vote online? We're going to do it online. I'm going to make a uh, paper option though where if people want to um, rank right them and mail them to me, they'll be able to. Um, same with the submissions. The submissions are going to be online, but we're going to have a paper option for people if they want to hand draw. And we've got some graphics designers that have agreed to help that if somebody doesn't have access to the software and wants to hand draw something that will have it professionally rendered out into the, the idea that they have. So if they make it to the finals, we'll, we'll kind of work with all of those to get the, the, all the designs as level Mayor as we can. Mayor Clark. We had previously talked about involving Norman Public Schools. Yes. So how, would the students have access to these graphic designers? The finalists will have okay. access to the graphics designers. So that's where we know we're going to get some hand-drawn submissions and we're going to, the, the submissions don't necessarily have to be this polished product. If somebody just has an idea with zero graphics design and they want to convey that, write an artist statement explaining how they want it to look or the idea here or there, that's, the committee is going to take all of those things into account. And, um, and then if, if they make the finals based on that, the, before it's presented for voting, they'll all be polished over and then approved of by the submitting artist. Well, and I've spoken to the superintendent, Dr. Miller, you know, and he seemed completely open to in having the schools involved in it. Great. I would just ask that you involve all schools, not just Norman Public Schools, mm -hmm. because we have 
little axe. several private schools, yep. Little Axe. Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> and then any student that does participate, I think it'd be awesome to send them some sort of certificate for participation, just oh, to yeah. really kind of encourage engaging in stuff like this. Yeah, that's I love it. Yeah, and we'll reach out to CCS and reach out to the private Perverted. schools. And so, which we're going to spread the word through the schools. I've spoken with the principals when they got together, and they're going to help get it to each individual school. Um, so definitely getting the word out, but it will be anybody can submit too. So if, if they're at a school that doesn't have May access Clark. to it. Does it have to be a Norman resident to submit? It does not. Okay. Uh, anybody can. So, the, uh, so public scoring, highest score gets presented to city council. That's the other thing with the scoring was Tulsa required a 50% or more, but they had three flag designs. So initially they all were like a third, a third, a third. So they had to do a runoff between the last two. And by the time they were done, everybody was sick of this project. So that's where the scoring has been recommended several times over as I've talked to people that have gone down this road. Uh, fundraising, crowdfunding, we don't seem to need much. Um, so far, I've been paying for everything we need to pay for, and it's, it's not been all that hard. Like I said, Day Creative is going to donate some of their time and resources, which is very highly appreciated. Uh, and we're going to come up with some level of an award and recognition for the winning, winning vote or winning design. Um, and then, yeah, that, at the end of all that, the current flag will remain. <laughs> I don't know how it works. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. You just I'm, talk. Oh, I just talked. I'm so sorry, Dr. <laughs> um, my question is, what are we going to use the flag for? Obviously, we'll fly a flag out mm -hmm. here, but is it not going to be on the city vehicles, really, right? It'd just be for cultural... Cultural. Yeah. Okay. So, sure, so yeah, and that's the thing. thing, and that's part of it, is we don't want to cause expense for re-decaling re the city vehicles. We don't want to have to redesign our... Um, put it on the buses. Hmm? We mm -hmm. could put it on the buses. Now, if we do later decide we want to put it on these things, I think that's a great idea. Huh. You know, for example, Chicago, that flag is not their seal, but it's on the side of their police cars, and it's on the side of a lot of things. Yeah. I do not want to propose anything that will cause any sort of budgetary constraint to install that infrastructure. That's appreciated. So the first goal is for it to be adopted culturally. And then those things typically will organically make their way into those when it's time to redesign, when it's time Air to Clark, did you have? I one. did. Uh, we used to have a flag type thing framed and hung up out here, but we don't anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I think when we get a final product, it'd be neat to frame it and give the artist some recognition and oh, yeah. put the artist statement right there and we conveniently have a space for it here at City <laughs> Hall now. I love it. Love it, love it. Love it too. Good oh. job. Mayor Clark. Oh, so even after all this, you might still be asking, why? <laughs> that kid's picture. <laughs> why, Norman? Why our flag? And it, it has to do, and I always choose my words very carefully with this, because I am an alumni of OU. I've got a couple of degrees from them, and I, again, born and raised here. I love our university. I don't want to decry our relationship as a city with our university, but we do live in the shadow of the University of Oklahoma. Outside of Norman, we are mainly known as the home of the University of Oklahoma. And it's not until you get the point of view on this town that a lot of us who live here get when we're here of how remarkable our city actually is on its own merit. But if we did have a single unifying cultural identifying flag, it's this one. And I think if we get our own city flag, we can definitely, we're not gonna out shine the University of Oklahoma, but it does a little more for us to carve out our identity as a city outside of just the home of the university. This is a beautiful flag, though, that follows all five principles of uh, design, and it looks good in the wind and at rest. And when being planted. It is copyrighted. Yes, ma'am. It's on the number six, right? So it is. Yeah. And when it's time to unveil this whole process mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be helpful to work with and I'll, I'll defer to Mr. Pyle on if it's appropriate but using our our video guy to do a quick if are you considering making a submission here's what we're looking for and cover you know just make it a, a helpful how-to oh, yeah like a quick even one minute video absolutely yeah, I, we're, think, we're I think we're if we don't on... provide some guidance on what we're looking for mm -hmm. it, we may get some interesting stuff. council member patron thank you on a follow-up to that it would be good if there was one that was geared toward the kids too mm -hmm. yeah yeah so and we're working on generating that content and getting it together I have any help i can get from the city i also do not want to 
drain any funds and resources from the city. So anything, if we need to supplement the expense of the video videographer's time, I'd like to arrange for that if we can. Mr. City Manager. And, and Doctor, you may know, but it would have to be historically long before you were a, a studier of vexillology. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, years and years ago, the when recycling first became a thing, the the ad was a very simple stick figure over a trash can. It just said "pitch in," mm -hmm. and I think that was that was done by an elementary school kid yeah. through this kind of a process. And I mean, it went nice. nationwide oh, for a decade. That symbol was mm -hmm. on every recyclable can all over the United States. So it, it, this will be a fascinating process cool. because from the the simple vision of, you know, could be a fifth grade kid that mm -hmm. comes up with this thing that, you know, when real artists could help them, you know, yeah. clean it up and formalize it, could be really fantastic. Council Member Scandal. Timelines for all of this? So we're, <laughs> I've been pushing the timeline back because I went and had another kid. Well, my, <laughs> my wife had this kid. <laughs> I was there the whole day and I kept telling her she's doing a great job. <laughs> So we, we, he's, he's almost one year old now. That's kind of why this got delayed after our initial push last year. And then Grady Carter, who's co-chairing this with me, went and got married. And so uh, we're, we're getting the, the wheels back going. I wanted the submissions to be going on during the school year. So hopefully we'll get all this rolled out within the next few months so that while kids are in school, we can get the word out to them. And then if the dream really comes true, we will be adopting this pretty close to Flag Day next year. June, oh, June, yeah. Wow. So that's the goal. Um, I'm so not promising that. Though. How do we help you? What do you need from us? Uh, right now, I just what, wanted to get the new members informed. Uh, we can get together on some of the ways we can help generate some of the content to get the word out. It would be great. We are also looking for a few more committee members. I've already gotten commitments from former Mayor Bill Nations. Uh, Bianca Gordon with Bridges, yes ma'am. It's worth pointing out that former mayor Bill Nations was mayor when the logo was it. So making sure we get that vision included and not stepping on toes mm -hmm. and not ignoring that process. When, when, I, when I first started this, you need to talk to Bill Nation. You need to talk to Bill Nation. <laughs> yeah, we got together, and, and fortunately, it ended in a lot of smiles and handshakes. And, yeah. and enough to where he's been willing to jump on board with our committee. Um, Bianca Gordon, who works for Bridges, I think many of us know her. Uh, Mrs. Laughlin, who was my Oklahoma history teacher, I went to West, and she's a fantastic wealth of Oklahoma history knowledge. Um, so I'm excited about that. Jay Nicole Hatfield is a native artist, and if you're not familiar with her work, I would encourage you to go check her out because it is fantastic. Um, we do have, our goal is to have a senior from Norman High and Norman North. Uh, Charlotte Mencino is a Norman High senior who has agreed to, to hop on board on the committee. We're looking for a senior from Norman North. That's still reaching out. Okay. Um, I think it was Lindsay Bellino. Mm -hmm. Did, I think she's Norman North. I never heard back from her. I email. All right. I'll, I'll check that. We're getting close. Okay. And Norman we're. North. Yeah. We're wanting to make sure we have representatives of every culture, every age group, every group in town that we can. So, and we're looking for about three to five more members or so. I think after that it gets a little crowded. Uh, council members Kate Beerman and Joe Carter have agreed to. How does an organization request a presentation like this from you? Just give me a call. Can okay. we get or, that on the city's website or absolutely. something? Absolutely. Sure. sure. Uh, I've presented to a few of the local business organizations. I got to present to the Norman Public Schools principals. I love giving this presentation. Uh, I'd like to have you at the student resident roundtable once it absolutely. is ready for submission. I'd love to be there. Can I make another suggestion for mm -hmm. committee members? Can we reach out to Little Axe Schools? Sure. And maybe the tribes that are oh, yeah. represented in the. Um, I'd love to. If we can get you can give me some contacts, I'd love to talk to them and, and get them in. I'll get with you afterwards. Great. See what I have. And we've, here are some resources. Uh, these are the report, uh, a couple of podcasts and YouTube videos and articles that outline, again, successful flags, the what, the why. We've made a Facebook group, Norman Flag. Uh, and then we've got our website and our email address. It's just the website's pretty bare bones right now. But that'll be where a lot of the submission voting happens. Um, How's the, the Facebook I'm, group going? 
Yeah, we push uh, back or anything? <laughs> nope, no push back. Um, there were, you know, when the, the transcript read, and read, ran an article when we first started talking about this and doing it. And what I've, what's been nice is when you, a lot of the pushback and a lot of the questions, uh, the, the first, there's actually a frequently asked questions section on the website because the first thing people say is, well, how much is this going to cost the city? You know, we've got all these other city problems we need to face. Why are we spending our time doing this? And that's why we want it to be a citizen-driven thing. We don't want to deplete the city's resources to make this happen. So this can exist while we address things like Senior Citizen Center and address stormwater. We're, uh, so it's not going to cost the city anything. The, um, the other one is why change our flag? I think that's what mainly I've been trying to answer this whole, this whole time. Um, Remember, there's another one that comes up a lot, but when you get a chance to explain the what's and why's, I've had uh, high, high levels of those people then understand and they get on board and they, they like it. So I get to have anybody really dig their heels in and tell me I'm horrible for doing this. Good. I um, didn't really ever notice our flag until mm -hmm. you brought this up the last time I saw your, pre or the first time I saw your presentation, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, our flag is kind of weird, isn't it? I mean, it's a good flag or a good seal, like you said. Yeah. But as far as a flag goes, it's it's undiscer undis indiscernible. Yeah. For as many flying. of us love our town, if it was a good flag design, I think it would be flying all over town already. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, is there any questions? Any additional questions? I just have one last comment based on, I think I've shared it the first time we saw it a year or so ago. Um, you all know my hometown is Wichita, Kansas, and I don't, they didn't go through a process because they discovered a city flag. I still haven't gotten the story behind that, but historically they had a flag, found it, and it's been the exact same response. And so I've been able to see it from the perspective of someone who lived there pre-flag, and whenever I go back, it's just shocking. I mean, it's, it's such a great source of community pride, and that's why I'm wholeheartedly supporting it's this like project. It's grounding. I mean, it's everything from the actual flags. Wichita State has used it in their shirt so I've seen that. Uh, Old Town, their version of Bricktown, the bar mats are the flag. I mean it's it's koozies, bumper stickers, it's everywhere. So I'm excited to do something positive that won't cost us any money and increase citizen engagement. Really and that also creates an opportunity to talk about our legacy and what being a citizen in Norman means. And I'm excited about that. Uh, from the science of vexillology and, and even with Council Member Scanlon's um, military perspective, I am under the impression that when we make beach towels and t-shirts that are the American flag, that that's considered a no-no from the flag etiquette perspective. From the etiquette perspective, that's right, but that doesn't stop it. <laughs> from a the freedom of speech issue. Etiquette right. is not a thing From anymore. a city flag perspective, it almost seems to be part of the motivation that we want it to be t-shirts and koozies and oh, yeah. mm -hmm. just, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, with the jean company that, you know, it, it wouldn't be awesome if everything York related coming out of Johnson Controls up here on the north side of town came with a that flag on the box Proudly stamp made in kind Norman of a, Oklahoma. absolutely yeah. kind of a thing so it, it feels like there is a different etiquette level of acceptance for that kind of utilization of this flag as opposed to the stars oh, yeah. and stripes there typically is and if I and correct me if I'm wrong because I'm fuzzy on this I know that there is a written flag code for the United States flag which lays out the guidelines of how to display it how to illuminate it how not to that's make clothes out of it or <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's something we could always consider doing is writing a flag code for our flag. But I think the, usually on these levels, it's a little more casual and most people use it well. And I have nothing else if anybody, do you have any questions? We only have one participant today. We designed a, uh, I'm Richard Selinski, I conduct the symphony in town here. We have a symphony that was designed musically off of our Butchard Bow logo. Mm -hmm. So when I talked to the mayor about this, uh, we had a, you know, she said, oh, we're changing the flag. I thought, oh, we just, we just wrote a symphony. It's on, it's on the wall here. Oh. So Libby Larson wrote, we, when we started mm -hmm. symphony nine years ago, she took every element of that flag and made a, a musical motive. And then she wrote a 25 minute symphony. Oh, wow. So, but it's still going to be the logo. Yeah. So I think well, it might actually, people might, take more notice of the logo if we have a new flag. Well, and what I'm, yeah. 
what I'm hoping to see, I mean, this is the example we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven elements represented on here. So some sort of geomet geometry that comes out to seven. Or if we decide we want to add an eighth, you can make an eight-point star. There's lots of ways that we can still make what's on this flag relevant and just, you know, symbolize it a little more effectively. A second symphony. I want it to be green. Second symphony. <laughs> I want it to be green. Council members cannot submit flag designs. I know people, though. Nobody, <laughs> nobody on the committee can submit I'll be flag influencing. Designs. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. If, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, council member. Prefer that we get a hold of you, council members get a hold of you at this email, or can, do you want to, after we go off air, give us a different way? I'll, do that. I'll give you my direct one. Okay. I checked that one about every two or three days. But. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for your presentation, your hard work on this. I really. When I first heard it, I thought, now what? And now I'm like, I can't wait to see what it's going to be. Absolutely. I'm getting really excited about it. So I, thanks for staying so focused on it, you know. It's, getting refocused. Yeah. yeah, and refocus. Well, I mean, you had a baby. But uh, anyways, thank you so much. That was our only agenda item. So do we have any miscellaneous comments? Anything you want to talk about? Anybody? No? Nope. I'm with you. I just think this is super cool. It's Yeah, yeah I think it's going to be fun and cool and... And maybe a, a Team Norman moment where we can all be mm -hmm. together on and something. I agree with you as well that we lack that identity symbol that says we're more than just OU, that we have something going on here that's really oh, special. I really appreciate that it's citizen driven mm -hmm. and that it's an interest of yours and that you're engaged and energized about it and brought it to us. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, can I just say for a moment that this is nice and refreshing to have somebody bring us really a, a, a gift wrapped solution. <laughs> Not, you know, just come and complain about something and walk away. So thank you. I really appreciate it. It's been wonderful. So thank you. I can't wait to see what happens. So with that I guess we're adjourned. All right. Got nothing else. Interesting hobby. Hobby is flat.